Now before we start creating our side view or the profile of the sunflower and the buds, let me just show you this. If you want to create a sunflower that had a double row of petals, I've just created one that's got a single row, you don't really need to go through all that extra work. So I'll just show you with this one. We'll take that, we'll duplicate it so we keep the original, and I'm going to ungroup it. That's Control Shift G to ungroup. Okay, so I'm going to group the center part. So that's Control G. Let's move it out of the way. And all I have to do is duplicate this. So that's a Control and drag that duplicates or copy and paste. Okay, now I'm going to maybe rotate, flip it vertically just so they're slightly different. And just put them on top of each other and just rotate them a bit. And you kind of have a double row of petals. So there it is. So you don't really need to go through all the trouble of making massive amounts of petals. Now, next thing I would probably do is just add a little bit of a drop shadow. So I might go to my shadow. And let's see. Take maybe this one here, a center shadow. And I'd want to use a brown color, not a dark black. So I'll use a nice brown, one of the, one of the browns we saved. Take the transparency down so it's a little darker. And just take the size in. So I'm going to take the size down. And that brings it more into the middle. So it just gives you a little bit of a shadow. You can see it's more in the middle here. But it does give you a bit of a shadow. It makes it look a little more three-dimensional. Okay, now we'll take this. We'll bring that to the front. And then we put it on top. And so there's your sunflower. You could stretch this out a little bit bigger if you want it. And now you have a sunflower with a double row of petals. So you don't have to go creating masses amount of petals. You just have to create really one ring like this and just duplicate it like that. Okay, so let's get rid of this and let's create our little side view. Okay, this is going to be very, very easy. We have all the component parts. I'm going to just take this. I'm going to duplicate it. Okay. I always like to leave the original in case I uh, mess it up. I can always go back to the original. So we're going to take this one apart. Again, you can go right-click, group, ungroup, or control shift g to ungroup. Okay, so we're going to take the seed head here first. We'll take that. And again, I'm going to just duplicate that in case I mess it up. So I have to return to it. So we'll take that. And I'm going to cut half of it out. Only need about half. Okay, so I'm going to grab a rectangle. Just go right here. Click on the seed head. Click on the rectangle and go to my drawing tools format merge shape and subtract and that's all i need okay now what i'm going to do and you're going to have to just bear with me with this i'm, I'm going to be cutting this out i'm going to be gouging this out like taking bites out of this so you're going to just have to bear with me to see what i'm doing okay so i'm going to take circles like this and it doesn't matter whether it has an outline or not what i'm going to do is make multiple circles like i'm going to duplicate another one and another one. So I'm trying to go like this. I'm going to try to scoop it out like this. Another one. They kind of go look like, they're going to kind of look like bite marks. And that's really what I want. And then we're going to do like this. So it kind of just loops a little bit like that, with a little curve. Okay, so I'm going to take all the circles. Make sure you got them all, not the seed head. I'm going to go to Format, Merge Shape. I'm going to say Union. So they're uh, one piece. I'm going to take the seed head, and then I'm going to click on the circles, and I'm going to cut that out. So the circles are going to cut out into the seed head. So I'm going to do this, subtract, and we get that exactly what I want. Okay, so we got these little bite marks. So how does this work? So let me show you. I'm going to take the petals. I'm going to ungroup them. Again, group, control shift g or ungroup. And I'm going to take one quadrant. That's all I really need. And I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. Hold my shift, just drag them a little bit smaller. Okay, so here's how it works. I'm going to bring the seed head to the front. Bring to front. Okay, now watch what happens when I do this. Bingo. It kind of looks like we have the petals flowing backwards. What I'm going to do now is create another, another quadrant here, like that. And I'm going to go to rotate. Flip. I'll flip vertically. So again, they're not just perfectly in line. We'll bring the seed head to the front again. And now that we have more petals, we just put them together like this. And we just move them around. And you can see what we have. Okay, so you can see that the petals look like they're folding backwards. So with those little 
bite marks into the seed head, you can just see the petals. Uh, they really look like they're folding backwards. And it's exactly what I want. So that looks pretty good. It's no more work than that. That's it. And I'm going to take this. Okay, we're going to flip that horizontally. We're going to send that to the back. So I'm going to go send to back. Okay, and then we can rotate this a bit. And you have petals coming over the back. So take that. And I'm going to flip it vertically so they're not all quite the same. So I'm going to take that one. We're going to go to send to back. Put that down here and kind of rotate it a bit. And you kind of have something that looks a little bit like that. So there it is. And now you have what looks like a profile of a sunflower. We can also flatten this out. Maybe we should do that. Just make it a little bit flatter. Bring this in a bit. Bring the back petals in just a bit. And I think that's good enough. I don't think we need to do any more work than that. Okay. Now what I can do is I can take one of these and put a little shadow on them so they so they looks like they're overlapping the ones behind it. So I can put a shadow on that. So I go by format. I'm going to go and see. I'm going to go here and see which one do I want. So maybe uh, one like this, offset to the left. I'm going to make it a brown. And take the transparency down. And we're going to take the size down. Like that. So just a little bit. Now, all we need is a teeny bit. For the most part, you're probably not going to see the shadows that are slightly overlapping the white that we have here. So we can also bring it up. And we can take this back down. Take the size a bit down like this. Then you have something that looks slightly three-dimensional. Again, this probably, don't make them too big. And this probably won't even, you won't even notice that on the background. And if you do, you'll have to uh, fix it. Okay, you can also, well, of course, with the shadow, you can also move it around. So with the angle, we can move the angle like this. So you can see it's moving around. So you can always play with that. We just want a hint of a shadow, just, you know, a hint of a shadow here and there. So it looks three-dimensional. Now for the seed head, we're going to put an inner shadow. So I'm going to go to my shadow. And I'm going to use an inner shadow. So I want the shadow to be on the left side. So the left side's right there. So I'm going to give it a click. And you can see what that does. It just puts a little bit of a shadow. Now I'm going to take the uh, transparency up so it's not so solid. But it just makes it look a little more uh, stronger. So we have a shadow inside here. So the petals will be kind of throwing a bit of a shadow. So that looks pretty good. So now we're going to take our center part here. And I'm going to just copy it. I'm going to put it here. And maybe just rotate it. And we're going to flatten it up a bit. Okay, shouldn't be so round because we're looking at our profile. It looks pretty good. I think I'm going to make that center part a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go to my format. And I'm going to go to my corrections. And just make it a teeny bit lighter. Take one of these. And we have something like that. That looks pretty good. Now we're not going to bother with the stamens. You're not going to actually see them here. I'm not going to bother with this shadow. You can if you want to use this shadow. I mean, it might add to it, but I think at this point, I think that looks pretty good. We have so many things in this arrangement we're going to make, so I don't think we need to bother putting extra drop shadows when they're not necessary. Okay, so this one is done. So we're going to group that and put it aside. Okay, now we have to create a nice little bud. Okay, that's going to be very easy. Again, we're going to take one of these. We're going to rotate them. Okay, now I'm going to make a duplicate. So this part, this one here is going to be on the outside. That's going to be the inside. So what I want to do with the outside is make these a little bit darker. So I'm going to click on them. And I don't want that. I want to get the actual shape. Okay. So I've got the actual shape. If we go here to my fill, you'll see I've got the actual shape. So make sure you're getting the actual shape here and not the folds or the edges. Okay, so I've got that. And all I'm going to do is just reverse these. Just like that. Okay. So they're a little bit darker. So I'm going to click again. They got that one. I just reverse them. So they're a little bit darker. And just keep doing that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate these. 
and I'll just give it a flip, rotate, flip horizontally, so they're not all quite the same. And we'll just kind of rotate them a bit. Kind of line them up, kind of like that. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now again, we could put a drop shadow. So if I want to, go to my shadow, go to my presets, let's see, maybe a top shadow like that. Again, we want to change it to that brown, take the transparency down, and all we're going to do is take the size down a bit. So there's just a hint of a shadow, and again, you're not, these shadows here you're not going to see because they're going to go on top of these petals, so we don't have to worry about it. But that's a little bit of a hint of a shadow. Okay, so we take those and we group them. Okay, so we're going to take this, we're going to duplicate that, and again, we're going to just rotate, flip that, and just kind of line them up. Something like that. And we can do the same thing. If you want to put a drop shadow, you don't have to, but if you want, do the same thing. Drop shadow. Let's say something like that. Change the color. Take the transparency down so it's a little stronger. And we'll take the size down so it doesn't overlap too much. Something simple like that. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now we got to group that. Okay. This has to come to the front. Bring that to the front. And we just overlap, and we have something that looks like that. And that's basically all you want. Okay, so that looks like a bud. So we're going to select that, and we're going to group it. Okay, so we have our bud, and we have a profile. Now we have to create what we call the bracts. That's the green part. The bract is like a modified petal. It's designed to protect the petals. So that's the next thing to do, is to create the bract. Now, before we continue, I want to talk about shadows. You already noticed that when we put an inner shadow on a petal and we rotate the petal, the shadow appeared to move around. Now, we're doing outside shadows now, and we're going to be doing a lot more of them. And there is a particular property of the outside shadow that you should be aware of. So I'm going to demonstrate it to you. So I'm going to click this heart shape, draw a heart shape, and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to rotate it sideways. And what I'm going to do is apply an outside shadow to both of these. So I'm going to go to my shadow. And to make things easier, instead of calling them outer and inner shadows, I'm going to call the outside shadow a drop shadow, because that's technically what it's usually referred to. And a drop shadow is just a shadow that goes to the outside. Okay, so I want a bottom shadow here. So I want this one that says bottom. So I give it a click. Now I want you to notice when I click on this one, where the shape handle. The shape handle indicates the top of the object. So one would assume if I put a bottom drop shadow here, the shadow should go here. So let's see what it does. So doing the same thing, go to the bottom. And it doesn't. It puts it to the bottom. So the thing with the outside shadow is that it doesn't matter the orientation of the object. It doesn't matter which way you rotate it. This is considered the bottom. So whichever way the, the object is rotated, this is going to be the bottom. So you have to keep that in mind. And... The next problem is this. What happens when you rotate the shadow? Okay, so I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to rotate it. Notice the shadow here is at the bottom where the point is. So I rotate it, and you notice the shadow is still at the bottom. It did not rotate with the object. So you got to keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of these special effects do not rotate with the object, unlike gradient fills that have an option that you can rotate or not rotate the fill. Uh, most of the special effects don't have that kind of stuff, okay? So you have to keep that in mind, and that's going to be a problem when we start putting shadows, outside shadows, on these objects, and then we start rotating them, because the shadow will stay in position, and it won't look the way we actually created it. So when we rotate things, we often have to go back and rotate the shadow. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's get rid of these, and let's continue. Okay, we're going to create the bracts now, and the bracts are kind of like the modified petal or leaf that actually protects a flower head. Now the shape we're going to use is the actual teardrop shape. So we're going to click on the teardrop shape, and we're going to just draw a teardrop shape like this. And the reason I'm using this one is because it has a point. I want to drag the point out. A sunflower bract has a very long point on it. So something like that. We're going to get rid of the line, and we're going to apply a nice gradient to it. So we're going to go to our gradient. Uh, obviously we don't want dark yellow to light yellow. We want actual green. Okay, so I'm going to click on this one. 
and I'm going to make it just this green here. And I'm going to click on that one, do the same thing, make it a green. Now I want one of the greens to be darker, one of the greens to be lighter. So I'm going to click on, let's say, this one, one I'm going to make it darker. So where the brightness is, I'm going to spin that down. Let's say we go down maybe about a minus, about a 65. Makes it a little bit darker. This one, we're going to be spinning up. So maybe about a 35. What I'm trying to do is tone down the green. I don't want it so bright, bright green. I want it more of an earthy green. So we have two kind of earthy green colors. That's good. And the rotation doesn't really matter. I mean, I want the dark to be a little more at the bottom, but it doesn't really matter all that much. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to take the dark up just a little bit. So it's just a little bit darker. And I'm going to bring the light down a bit, just a little bit lighter like that. So I'm just bringing these in a bit. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Now, um, this bract is like a modified petal. So it's going to have folded edges, just like these petals do. So let's go grab our shape. We're going to take the wave shape, draw the wave shape. We want the same shape as we had before. And we're going to take it down. And we have something like this. So I'm going to take this color. Grab my format painter, apply it to that, and we have that. I'm going to rotate it, and we have that. Now, what I want is just a dark. I don't want the light. So remember how we have to do that. So we need to create another dark. Stop right here. Get rid of the light stop. Drag this one over and make that transparent. So we have something like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. And let's see. I'm going to bring it down to about a 90, so we have a nice... The uh, perfect dark right to the edge and lighter to this side here. We can bring it a little dark if we want. Just make it a little darker. We can bring the transparency up a little bit like that. So we can play with that. Okay, so um, you notice we got the point here. So what we want to do is we want to go to Format, Rotate. We want to flip vertically. Okay, we want the round part up there. And we just put something, we just do it like this. We just put it like this, put it here. We can drag it down a bit. So we have something that looks like it's folding over. And then we want to cut that. So we're going to go to our nice little shape here. So we want to go to this shape, our free freeform shape. We're going to click, 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 click. Grab this shape, hold the shift, click on that shape, and we're going to cut it. Okay, it looks pretty good. I like that. And maybe I'll take this back a bit so it stretches out a bit like that. That looks pretty good. This definitely does not have to be perfect. We're going to be converting this to PNG and applying one of the picture uh, tool effects to it. So you're not going to see the stuff really detailed. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to take that one. I'm going to rotate, flip it horizontally, kind of just do this kind of same thing. Just rotate it. Just kind of like this. And that looks pretty good. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now I've got to create the folds because these have little folds. So I'll just take one of these. And I'll just squish it up like we did the other ones. And I might um, take the dark back. I'm going to take the dark back a bit so it's not quite as dark. And all we're going to do is create a bunch of little folds just like we did with the other one. Okay, so we're going to just create a bunch of folds. Again, a lot of the detail here you're not going to see when we put it in the PNG. But we kind of want to indicate it anyways. Because sometimes, depending on how strong the effect is, you might see it and you might not see it. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of color. I want a little bit of color. I don't want this to be solid green. I kind of want the idea like the, the bracts are folding backwards and they're kind of decaying because they're dying because the, the petals are forming. So, I'm going to take the dark stuff here. And I, what I'm going to do is add an orange to it. So, we get just a little shade of color in there. Okay. And then I might take this one. And do the same thing. Take that and just give it a hint of color with the orange. So that's all we're doing. Okay, we've got a little bit of color and I might flip that. So we don't want them all going the same way. Same with these. Just maybe. So we don't want everything going quite the same way. Okay, that's that's all we need. Okay, I'm going to take this. I'm going to group it. Okay, now I'm going to just put this one aside case we need to for something else and now we're going to create the rest of them okay so I'm going to take this I'm going to put one here and I'm going to rotate them now again these are not proportional these are well, I'm not creating proportional things right now so these bracts would be much smaller because they got to fit into here so just keep that in mind these are not proportional and I'm going to rotate that one like that so we have them going to 
different sides. And I'm going to take one more. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to kind of straight it out. And I'm going to send that one to the back. And that's going to go kind of in between like this. Brack overlap themselves. So there's kind of like three or four rows of these things. So I'm kind of trying to indicate that. Okay, I'm just move that one out of the way. Okay, I'm going to take these and I'm going to just hold my control and drag. So we got a duplicate and just overlap them like this. This is all I'm trying to do. And then I can take maybe a couple of more to those. Just drag them like this. I think I'm going to send these two to the back. Just go behind. Okay, so now we can just kind of, these. I want these behind. Okay, looks good. And we just kind of rotate these things a little bit. We don't want the points all going in the same direction, so we rotate a little left, a little right. So it makes it look a little more natural. Okay, so we don't need that many of these. That looks pretty good. And now we want to kind of end it. So I want to kind of give the idea that these are rounded because they're kind of going around the petals. So I'm going to take another one. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to send that to the back. And I'm going to just kind of rotate this down a bit. So it's going to go a little higher up. So just to give an idea that it's kind of rounding around. I can take, I'll take this one again. I'll just duplicate it. I'll just format. Rotate, flip horizontal, and send that to the back. And we just do that same kind of thing there. Just rotate them. Okay, so we got something like that. Now you could also just click on these, get the outside shape. Make sure you got the outside shape that I have right here. And you can just, um, if you want to make some variations, modify it, move it around. So they're not exactly all the same. So I might click on this one. And make sure I get the actual teardrop shape. So you click or you use your tab key and just again rotate them around so we get some variation. Remember, if you click on an object and you hit the tab key, you can get what you need. Okay, so I got the shape. I'm going to rotate that one. So again, we're just putting some variation in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, what I'm going to do is take all these, select these. I'm going to copy them and we're going to paste them as a PNG. Okay, so what kind of effect do we want on these? So the effect I actually want, the effect I actually want is the glass effect. Okay, and we can do it through here. We go to the main menu. So we'll take the glass. It's right here. It says glass, and it gives us that. Okay, now you can see where the yellow comes in. So the yellow adds a little bit of variety there. And I'm really looking for these dark specks. This is really what I want because the bracts are kind of like dying. They're, they're folding back. The petals are growing. The bracts are no longer required. So they kind of, you know, they turn a little bit of color. They turn a little dark. They're, they're kind of dying. So uh, that's what I want to indicate here. So now I'm going to take my transparency and I'm going to take that. Let's see. I'll probably take it up to about around 60%, somewhere around there, 60%. I definitely want these dark areas to show. Now remember, this is very large. When we reduce it, a lot of this stuff is not going to be quite as, uh, as detailed. So we're going to take that, and then I'm going to change the scaling. I want a lot of the darkness around this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take my scaling and just drag it all the way over to the right, and we get something like that. That's exactly what I want. Okay, so we're getting a lot of texture in here, and we got those dark spots, and with the yellow in there, it really adds to it. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut into these things. Let me get rid of this one first. Let me get rid of that one. And just move it off to the side in case we need to use it again. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I actually want to slice into here. And that's going to give the idea of the, that the bracts are actually bending backwards. We really can't make them really bend backwards, but we can give the kind of the illusion of them bending backwards. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to grab my little wave shape. And I'm going to draw my little wave shape. Get the same shape we had before. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the outline. And I'm going to make this color white. And I'm going to stretch it down. Okay, so I'm going to rotate this and you'll kind of get the idea of what I'm doing. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to have the white cut into this. So I'm going to make a bunch of these little white shapes. And then we're going to subtract them from the object. So we have something that looks like it's really cut in there. And what that does is kind of make it look like it's bending backwards a bit. So 
I'm rotating these things. I'm going to rotate and make some wider, some narrower, just to kind of try to do things like this. Okay. And it's going to make the bracks look like they're folding that ways. They're going to lose a little bit of their teardrop shape, but you're not going to really notice it because they're going to be a lot smaller than what you see here. Okay. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm taking a bunch of these. I can rotate them, go to different angles. Okay, try not to slice into them like this. This is definitely not what we want. We don't want you slicing into them, into the tips. Okay, so you can see what we have here. So we're going to now select all this. Just make them a little bit bigger. Okay, so now we're going to select all this. That includes the little white shapes you made here. We're going to go to our format, merge, and we're going to subtract. And those are actually punched out. Okay, so now I'm going to make them smaller because they're going to be fitting on this. Okay, so we have something that looks like that. And I think what I'm going to do to the bracket, I think I'm going to go to format, go to color, just make them a little more on the yellow side. You can click that so they're a little warmer. Just gives them a little more natural feel. And then we're going to actually make them a little darker. But right now we're going to show you how this works. Okay, so there's the bracks. Now we're going to apply a shadow to it. So we're going to go to our preset. I want the shadow to go to the top. So there's the top. I'm going to apply a nice top shadow. Now I want a nice brown. I don't want a dark black. I want a brown. And we have the brown. I'm going to take the transparency down so it's a little darker. And obviously you can see the shadow going off it. I don't want it going off it. So we're going to take the scale down. And when you take the scale down, you see what it does. It brings it in. So it's brought in. And then I'm going to take the distance. So the distance will move it up. So I'm going to spin up. And the distance moves it up. And we have something like that. So we got a little bit of a shadow in there. It looks a little more dimensional. It looks pretty good. Okay, now we're going to take this one. And we're going to duplicate it. And we're going to make it a little bit smaller. And we're going to change the shadow color. So we're going to go to black. And we're going to take the transparency up. And I want it there, but I want it so dark. And then we're going to layer this one on top. And you can see by cutting into it, we get the idea that there's individual little uh, black petals. And they are all look like they're kind of moving. Okay. And then we're going to take that one. And we're going to rotate it, flip it horizontal, because we don't want it to be going all exactly the same way. So you can see what's happening there. Okay, now I'm going to take the transparency down, make just a little bit darker. And so you can see what that does. It makes it look like there's another layer, like there would be. Now again, they lost a little bit of the teardrop shape, but that doesn't really matter, because when you make the smaller, you're not going to notice it. And then we take this one, and we're going to make that one smaller. I'm going to squish it in, flatten it out. Okay, because as the bracks open up, they're leading more and more forward. I'll take the transparency up so it's not so dark. And you can get an idea of what we're doing here. So you can see it, it kind of has illusion like the, um, the bracks are folding backwards like they're supposed to be doing. Okay, so we get something like that. I'm going to rotate that. So flip it horizontally. So again, it's not so perfectly even. And keep in mind, we're going to make these smaller. So it's going to look a lot smoother when it's a lot smaller. Now, the last thing we kind of do is we take this last one and we turn it upside down. I'm trying to make this look like this is the outside layer and it's folded backwards. And that's the best we're going to kind of do. But really what its purpose is, is to hide the stem. When we put the stem in here, we want to kind of hide the stem. So this is going to cover the stem when it's attached to the uh, flower itself. Okay, so we've got something that looks like that. It looks pretty good. And I think I'll take the distance, make it a little, go up a little bit. So it looks more like a shadow. Like that and I'll take maybe the transparent just on up a bit and you have something that looks like that okay so regroup all that and basically get something that looks like a sunflower bud that's starting to open up and the bracts are starting to fold backwards now you can do all kinds of things you can play with these so you can take one of them and you can stretch them out a bit more if you want like this so it really looks like they're folding backwards so you can see the edges more, the sharpness of them. So you can also grab this handle and drag it down if you want to make it look like it's bedding farther down. So you can still play with it. But I think for all intents and purposes, that looks pretty good. To me, it looks like 
as close as we want to get without spending too much time that these are bracks that are bedding backwards. Now I think what I'm going to do with this guy is make them just a shade bit darker. So I'm going to go to format. I'm going to go to my corrections and I might just make it a teeny bit darker. Okay. Cause that, this one's probably underneath. So it's bedding backwards and then you get something that kind of looks like that. Okay. So let's see how that looks on our dark background. Let's make it smaller. Now, of course, I've made these shadows at a certain size. So when I make them smaller, of course, I'm going to have to adjust. So keep that in mind. Okay. So I'm going to just make it a little bit smaller and you can see what I'm talking about. Let me just put it on the background. Okay. I'll make it just a little bit bigger. Okay. Now keep that in mind. We haven't decided how big these things are going to be yet. We still have to put it together. So uh, you're going to have to adjust the shadows. So it's looking pretty good there. And you can see the shadows did not uh, scale. Shadows are still the same size. So you got to go to your shadows. You got to click in each one of these and you got to take, the, let's say the distance down or they're not as deep and you have to do that to each one of these. You have to take the distance down. So they come down a bit. Okay. So we have something like this. And it kind of looks like the bracts folding down on the sunflower. And that's kind of what we want. Again, when you put things on the dark background, you're going to have to adjust. So that means we probably have to click on these guys and we probably want to make them a little bit darker. So that means going to format corrections and maybe just moving over something like this. So they'd be just a shade bit darker for each one of these things. Okay. So you might want to go make them just a little bit darker. Okay, so these are final adjustments that you're going to have to do after you get the background in there. So that looks pretty good. Now, remember, we still got to rotate this. So when we rotate it, the shadows aren't going to stay in the same direction. So watch what happens. Okay, so I'm going to rotate it outside like that. The shadows have stayed the way they were. They did not rotate. You got to go through the whole concept again about clicking on them and then rotating your shadows. Okay, so just keep that in mind. We haven't decided exactly how we want to position this, you know, which, what angle and stuff. So once you create your shadows, you're going to have to reapply them again. So I've got the outside bracket here. So I'm going to go and the shadows are going this way. So I want that. I have to put the brown back on them again. And I'm going to take the transparency down, move them up a bit. And I'm going to take the size down again so it doesn't go off. And then you got to do that to each and every one of these. So you got to go back. Reposition them again, take the size down so they don't go off. And that's just the way it works. There's nothing you can do about it uh, unless you know the exact position you want these in, which usually we don't because we get to play around. But anyways, there it is. So now you've got a nice little bud with these nice bracts that appear to be opening up, folding backwards. Okay, now what we want is the same thing here. We want these bracts for that one. So let me just borrow that one. Let me just take that. I'm going to ungroup it. Control shift G ungroups it. We don't need this. We'll get rid of that. And we just have this. We don't actually need much of the shadows here, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to group that. This is going to go behind the object. So we're going to go like that and we're going to kind of just stretch it a little bit bigger and we're going to go send to back. It goes to the back. You're not going to see much of it and just put it back like this. And we'll make it a little, maybe a little bit smaller since you don't see much of it. And you have something that looks like that. And that's basically it. So there's your bracket behind that one. That part is done. So now we got the sunflower. We got the full face. We got the profile. We got a bud. We got the bracket. Now we have to create the leaves and the stem. Now the leaves are going to be very important because they're going to be used to hide all the blank spots. So for example, we're not going to be making complete sunflowers with head, stems, leaves all attached together and putting them into here like a real arrangement. All we're going to be doing is for the most part is taking the seed heads and just dropping them into the arrangement and using the leaves to hide all the blank spots. So that's kind of what we're doing. So we do want to make the leaves look a little bit realistic because you're going to see a lot of them. So leaf is basically a heart shape. So we go get a heart shape and we draw a nice heart shape like this. So we stretch it down because it is kind of a long leaf. We'll just make it a little bit wider and then we're going to rotate it. So this is the top part of the leaf. This is the bottom part. So that's what we want. The next thing to do, of course, is to add the ridges. Sunflower leaf has these little ridges that go on the side. To save time, I think what we'll do is we'll just do half a leaf. We'll cut half of this off, do a complete half side, 
and then just duplicate that and flip it. That'll be a little faster for what we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a rectangle and I'm going to just cut this in half. And we have something like that. Okay, now we've got to create a ridges for that. For that, we'll just use a nice star shape. Let's take the 32 star. And again, we only need half of this. I'm going to take this and make the points a little smaller like this. And I'm going to grab a rectangle, cut that in half. Take that. Take that. Format. And subtract. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll move the outlines here, as you can see, kind of what we're planning on. So let me get rid of the outline. And we have this. I'm going to flatten this out. And I'm going to rotate it. And you get the idea of the ridges. Kind of like this. And we're going to kind of stretch it out. And we just rotate it. We just want them to peek out like kind of like that. We don't want them going all the way around, like all the way to the tip or all the way down here. And I think that's close enough. I mean, there's no standard how many rich little patterns they have here. So that's good enough. So we're going to take all this. We're going to go to Merge Shapes, do the Union. So just to give you an idea of what we're doing, I'm going to just duplicate this for now so you get an idea of what's happening. And I'm going to Format, Rotate, Flip Horizontally, and there's a leaf. So that's kind of what we're doing. Okay, so Sunflower Leaf. We got this done, and we have to add our color now. So it's going to be a nice darker green. So we're going to, so we're going to go to our Gradient. We get our default there. Let's go to these two stops. We only need two stops, and they're both going to be green. So I'm going to click on that one. We're going to use a light green here, like we've been using, kind of keeping things consistent. Click here. Use that green. Got that. Now I'm going to take this one, and I want it to be fairly dark. So I'm going to spit it down to about a minus 65. I want this one to be darker. I'm going to spit it down to about a minus 35. Now what I would like is the darkness to be more along the outside here. So I'm going to just spin it around a bit. Just so we have the darkness more. A little more along the outside edge like this. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, the next thing is we want to create those little veins. Okay, Sunflower has veins. You can see them in there. Now we're going to just put a couple of them in there, about four or five. We're not going to do a mass of them in there. But it does have veins, and we do want to indicate that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now the veins are going to be going up. Remember, at this point here is the top. This is the bottom. So the veins curl up. They don't curl down. Okay, so what are we going to use for that? We're going to just take a moon shape. I'm going to draw a moon shape like this. And get rid of the outline. And we're going to make it a little bit thinner, like that. Just a little sliver of a vein. That's all we want is a tiny little sliver of a vein. We're going to just stretch it out a bit. Now, we only need half of this because I want to go from thick to thin. So we only need half of this. I'm going to take my rectangle, do that. And we're going to cut that. And we're going to subtract that. Now, what I'm going to do is just put these in here, and I'm going to color them afterwards. So just to give you an idea of what we're doing here. The veins are going to come off like this, okay, so they come to the center. I don't want them coming to the edge. I want them a little bit uh, lower like this. Now, when you're stretching this, we don't want to use the corner handles because the corner handles stretch both vertically and horizontally. We'll use the middle handles. Okay, so that looks like a good one right there. We'll take another one. We're going to rotate that. So we want to indicate that coming off the center stem here or the center vein here, we have something like that. And we just keep doing that. However many you want to put in there. How energetic you feel. I'm going to just flatten these. And I add, I think, one more up here. Just rotate it a bit. And we'll just make that one a little flatter. Kind of like that. They don't have to be perfect, but you kind of get the idea. They're indicated in there. Okay, and I think I'll add one more, just kind of coming down at the bottom. I'll take that one, rotate it, kind of bring it down like this, and of course flatten it out. Don't want it to be too big. So like that. So I want them to look like they're all coming off the center stem here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Okay, next thing is we're going to group all these. It's important to group them. We're going to be using the group later on, so let's group that. And now we're going to apply our color to it. So I want them in there, but I don't want them to be that strong that they really stand out. So I'm going to go to my solid fill. And what I think I'm going to do is give it a gray color. So I'll use maybe one, two, the third gray down here. And I'm going to take the transparency fairly high, about 65%. Okay, they're in there. 
but they're not that obvious. Now I want to make this look three-dimensional because the veins actually kind of look like they're cutting into the leaf. So I want them to look like they're a little more three-dimensional. To do that, we're going to go to our effects. We're going to do a 3D format on it. We're going to go to top bevel. And we're going to just do this one right here at the bottom. Okay, the Art Deco one, that's good enough. And you can see what we've got here. So it looks like it's cutting into the leaf. That's exactly what we want. So you can see it's a little dark. So what I want to do is add a little bit of light to this. So I'm going to go to my lighting. And I'm just going to use maybe this one here, a warm sunshine. And we get something that looks like that. And that looks pretty good to me. So I do want it in there. I want it to be reasonably bright, but not too terribly bright. And this gives us a nice 3D embossed edge. So you can see it looks like it's really cutting into that. That looks pretty, pretty good. This is kind of how it works with the leaf. The leaf is very crinkly. But where the veins are, that's the bottom. So what happens is you get these little furrows. So it goes rounded, and then the vein cuts into it, and it goes rounded again. So you kind of get these rounded furrows in here, and then leading into the vein. So I want to create this roundness that leads into the vein. So we're going to use a shape. So let's go grab a shape. Let's take a nice cloud shape. And I'm going to take this green. I'm going to take the Format Painter, apply it to that. Now I'm going to take the dark one here. I'm going to spit it down. To about a minus 75 like that about that and i don't want the light one i want dark to dark because i'm going to make the one of the darks transparent so i'm going to click beside it get rid of this light one and just drag that one over there and make that transparent okay now i'm going to spin this so i have the dark towards the bottom that looks good and i might just take this up a bit so you don't see a complete cloud there i'm going to flatten this out now here's how it's going to work it's going to look a little awkward so the clouds with the dark parts are going to be touching the edge of the vein like this. And that's going to help give us this nice feeling of roundness, the furrow in there. So that's kind of what we're doing. Now we're going to be bringing the veins to the front so they'll actually be above the cloud shapes here. So right now I'll just get the cloud shapes in there. And you can see what we're doing. We're going to take it right to the edge. And then we're going to take this one and we're going to kind of just fill in the bottom, kind of like that, just to make it a little bit darker on the bottom, kind of like this. And then we've got one more to do here. So we'll just take that one and we'll make that one smaller. And just squish it down and rotate it. Okay, so that's really what we want. And what I'm going to do is just move this one off so I can grab the little veins. Remember, they're grouped together. Sometimes it's hard to grab them. So there, I've got them. We're going to go to right here. We're going to go and say bring to front. There you go. Put this one back. So that's basically what we want. And it looks a little awkward now, but you'll see how that's going to work out uh, when we turn these into PNGs. So we have our furrows, and those are very important. So we've got these nice rounded furrows, plus we have our nice little veins in here. Okay, I'm going to take that. I'm going to group it. And we're going to just flip that one. So we're going to go to Format. And we're going to rotate, flip horizontally, and we have something like that. Now we're going to ungroup that. Now you notice how the veins here went dark. That happens because we put a 3D effect on it, and we flipped it, so the light source is slightly different. So we've got to change the light source. We've got to fix all that. So I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go back to my effects, go back to my light source, and just kind of rotate it so it's like the other one. Kind of like that. So you just basically move it around until you get that 3D effect that looks really good. And I think that looks pretty good. Now I think what I'd like to do is move these up a bit because I don't want these to be exactly across from each other because it's not that way in real life. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select all these. Now I want to make sure I don't get the leaf in here. If I had the leaf, it would be right there. So I don't want that. Make sure you see the big rectangle for the veins. You want to get them all. And what I'm going to do is just kind of nudge these up a bit. So I don't want them to be exactly across from each other. So I'm going to just nudge them up a bit, kind of like that. So they're not perfectly in line. I'm going to take this and just stretch it back out. And we have something like that. Okay, and then I might have to rotate some of these to get them back into shape. You could even take one of these and just delete it. So if you didn't want it to be perfectly aligned like this, like a perfect duplicate, you can also do that. So we're going to select all this. Make sure you get the leaf there. So we've got the leaf. We're going to group that, and we're going to just bring them together like this. Okay, so they're not perfectly aligned. 
Okay, now what we need is a center vein down here. So I'm going to just borrow one of these. I'm going to click on one of these. Copy, paste, rotate it. And all I'm going to do is stretch it tall. I'm going to just stretch it out like this to grab the middle handle. So like this, put it here. And what I want is the more straighter parts. I'm going to rotate it. And then just kind of line it up so it's kind of in the center like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you get the idea. It looks pretty good like that. I don't need this top part here. So I'm going to go grab my shape right here. I'm going to grab the freeform shape. And we're going to cut that off. So we're going to click, 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 do the usual. Click. Okay. I'm going to click on my vein, the center vein. You want to keep that. I'm going to click on this. Format. We're going to subtract that. And we have that. Okay, so basically your leaf is now completed. So this is where we start using those picture effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to duplicate it. We're going to be applying two different picture effects. For the first one, I'm going to remove the veins. I don't want the veins on this. So I'm going to take this. And we're going to ungroup it. And we want to get rid of the veins. Okay. So you can see by the big rectangle, I've got the veins. I'm going to delete that. And we'll get the center one out of there. Okay. So this is what we want. Now we're going to select that. We're going to copy it. And now we're going to paste it as a PNG. And we get this. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So we're going to take this. And now we're going to apply one of those nice picture effects to it. I'm going to go down to artistic effects going to go here and what I'm going to be applying is what we call a watercolor sponge and that's going to give you my nice little texture here now what I want with this is the furrows I want to make sure I can see those nice furrows in there those are really good now I'm going to take the transparency down to about 50 percent I want them in there but I want to be that obvious I want the deep dark furrows in there more than I want pattern and now I'm going to add the veins to this now you might say why don't you just Take this one, copy it, and do that. Put a sponge on, on the whole thing. The problem is this. If I were to copy all this and apply a sponge to it and take it 50%, I would still see the hint of those veins. They're not going to be clear and sharp. And I want these veins to be clear and sharp. So that's why I'm just doing the shadows first. And then I'm going to now put the veins on this. So the veins stay clear and sharp. Now I'm going to grab the veins right here and I'm going to drag a duplicate over here. And that's what I want. So I want the veins to be clear and sharp. And if I, again, if I would have done this, had selected that and pasted it and applied the sponge, they would not be sharp. So I want the veins to be the last thing I put on here because I didn't really change these. I'm going to just duplicate these. I'm going to rotate the horizontal. I'm going to just move into position because we move these up. And again, I've got to change the light source. So I've got to go back to my effects, go to my 3D, and just change the light around so I get my nice 3D effect. Something like that looks pretty good. Then I need to take my center part here. I'm going to just duplicate that. Okay, so that's basically what we have. That's basically our leaf. Now we do the second effect. So this is going to have two effects. I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it. Now I'm going to just, um, just to have some room, I'm going to get rid of this one. Don't need that one anymore. And we're going to paste it. Okay, now here's your magic. Here's your last effect you're going to do. We're going to go back to artistic effect. Go here. And we're going to do what's called cement. Okay, so that's the cement. And the cement gives you a very three-dimensional pattern. Remember, we want this pattern in the leaf. The leaf is very textured. Now obviously this is way too strong of a texture. But what I like about the cement is that you have light and dark areas, and that's pretty good. All we got to do is take it down. We take the transparency down between 85 to 90 percent. So I'll just do an 87, and there it is. So what you have here is you have your textured effects. So you can see you have your furrows here. You got the nice textured leaf. If we rotate this around, that's what you get. You can see it looks very much like a leaf with the nice veining in here, and it looks quite realistic. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to format. I'm going to go to color. I'm going to add a little more yellow to it with the tone. So we add a little more yellow. And then I'm going to go to corrections and I'm going to just tone it down. So I'm going to 
make it not so contrasty, Dro drop it down a bit. So we have something like this. Okay, so what do you think? There's your leaf. Now if we were to put it in our dark background, see, it looks pretty good. Okay, next thing, we're going to add a little bit of color to this. Okay, so I'm going to just put it back to where it was. And this is what I mean. It looks pretty good, but it's kind of a flat green. So I want to add a little bit of color to this. So what I'm going to do is go to this one here. I'm going to just steal the little leaf here. You can see I have it there. You can see the rectangle. I'm going to copy and paste that. And we have this. So I'm going to put it right here. And what I'm going to do is put a little color in there. So I'm going to go to my fill. And I'm going to click on this one. And I'm actually going to use this dark red. Okay, I'm going to click this green. Make it totally transparent. And I'm going to click the red stop. Make that really transparent. And we just get a teeny hint of red there. So it adds a little color. And you can, of course, rotate that around. So you can have it going to the edges. Okay, now I'm going to just take this. I'm going to just group that and get it out of the way for now. So I want to show you the difference. As we're working with this, it helps to compare it to the original. So let me take this. Okay. Now I'm going to take this. I'm going to take the red out of it. And so you can see this is a little flatter. And now with the red in there, it looks a little more realistic, a little more uh, rounded. Okay. Now we can take this. We can duplicate that. We can do format, rotate. And we're going to flip horizontally, put it back. And you can do the same thing on that side. Just make sure you line them up. And you can see you have a little more dimension. You can also take this and just kind of rotate it around a bit. So you can have it going to the bottom. But what that does is make the leaf look a little more three-dimensional like that. If you didn't want to use red, you could use something like an orange. Take the transparency up. Pretty high. And you can see what that does is make it a little bit lighter on there. So again, it gives it a little more dimension on the leaf. Take this leaf again. I'm going to copy it, paste it. Okay, so instead of doing individual, you can take this, duplicate that, rotate, flip. Okay, put them back together, make them one piece. So I'm going to hold this, format, do a union, and let's say put it on here. And we can do the same thing, but now it's one piece instead of separate pieces. So if I go to here, and I do, let's say, dark red, and we take this, actually, I'll take, I'll make another red there, get rid of this green, take that red there, make it transparent, okay, and obviously we have to take that one down, and you get something that looks like that, so the red is more evenly spaced through there, but you can see it, it, it gives it a little more dimension to it, and then, of course, with this, you can rotate around, so... You get a little more dimension in it. And you can also change that. I've got a linear pattern. You can try a radial pattern. You can try a bunch of different patterns. Okay? Rectangular pattern. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. And it does give it a little more dimension. And again, you could apply, um, let's say, yellow. Okay? We take that yellow down. And what that does is just make it a little lighter. And we can... We can try a radial, and you can try different angles of the radial. You can take this in a bit. So what it does is, again, by adding these colors to it, we're adding another dimension to the leaf. So it's not such a flat, flat green. And we're still not done. So we have one leaf. Now what's going to be nice is to have another leaf done a different way. How about a half a leaf? Okay, so the next thing is we're going to cut this in half, and we're going to show you how to create like a half a leaf in here. Okay, so let's work on this one. So now we got a full leaf. We could add colors to them, make them look a little more realistic. But now let's do like half leaf. Okay, so we're going to take that and maybe we'll just take a rectangle. We're going to cut this in half, kind of like that. Click here, click there, and we're going to subtract and we have that. Okay, now we rotate this. We can rotate it this way and you can see we have a leaf that looks like it's going down. Okay, so we're looking at the edge of the leaf. So I'm going to duplicate this, okay, and I'm going to take this one, which is behind. I'm going to go to my format, go to my corrections. I'm going to make that darker, and now we put this one on top. We just put the points together like this. Make sure the points are together, and now you can see you got a folded leaf, so it looks like it's folding over, okay? Now if we take this and we group them and we rotate them, now it's up, so... But using the same thing, now we have a folded leaf and we have a wide open leaf. 
Okay, so, and then you can add the colors if you want to that. So you can also take this and you can stretch it down a bit so it looks more open like that. Now, if you want this to be a little more realistic, okay, so if you don't want such a straight edge here, you go, that doesn't look too natural to have a straight edge, then we can curve that edge, kind of like this. So if we take, um, let's say we take a wave shape, just draw a wave shape kind of like this. So it's going to, so it's going to kind of curve a bit, something like that, okay? So we take this, we take that, we go to Format, and we're going to Subtract, and you have that. So it's a little more curvy, not so straight. Then we do the same thing, we just duplicate that. Let me make that one go back to being a lighter color. Go to Corrections, let's make it lighter, and, you know, just put the points again. And you have it look a little more natural. Okay, so that is it. So we're going to have two types of leaves. We're going to have the full one here, and then we're going to have a side one like this. And then we can just change the colors on them and make them look like a variety of different leaves. Okay, so the next thing to do is the stems. And then once we've got the stems done, this video will be over. And the next video will be putting it all together because we have all our pieces. Okay, to create our stem, we're going to start with a curved arrow. We'll take this one here, and we'll draw an arrow. Now, if you watched our candy cane video, how to create nice Christmas candy canes, you kind of get the idea of what we're going to be doing here. We've got one, two, three, four little shape handles, each do something different to the arrow. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the arrow, and that's what this one does. It flattens it out. And then I want to round this, and that's what that shape handle does. It allows us to round it. And then this one will take that line up, so I'm going to click here and drag it up so we have something like that. That looks pretty good. So I want my stem to be kind of curving so the sunflowers are kind of leaning forward. Now the next thing to do is we're going to create a little wedge because where the sunflower head actually attaches to the stem, it actually kind of widens out. So we kind of want to indicate that. You may not even see that when we put it all together, but just in case, we're going to put it in there. So to do that, we're going to just go grab a nice wedge. We'll take this one right here. Just rotate it and we'll kind of put it like around here. And all we got to do is make it small and try to match as close as possible, something like this. We can rotate a little bit more. Now, technically, this um, it's not a straight wedge, the sunflower uh, head kind of curves into it like this. So, there should be a technically a curve here and a curve here, but we're not going to bother. I think that's pretty good. That looks pretty good. So, we're going to just take this. Union and we're going to be using this again. So I'm going to pull this aside. This is actually going to be for a shadow when you get this all completed. Okay, so we got that. Now, what I'm going to do is remove the outline. And now, what we have to do is we have to add the rest of the stem. Now, to do that, I'm going to go and grab a wave shape. I'm going to use my wave. I'm going to rotate it. I don't want a perfectly straight stem because they're not actually perfectly straight. So I want something like this, and I'm going to take this handle, and I'm going to try to straighten it out just a bit. I don't want to straighten like this perfectly straight, just a tiny, tiny little curve like this. And then I'm going to take this, and I want a point, and I'm going to just stretch it down a bit so we get something like this. Okay, so I'm going to remove the outline of that. I'm going to bring it in a bit, and I'm going to just kind of line it up something like this. A sunflower stem has these little bumps on it, and I kind of want to indicate that too. And then all I have to do is just keep doing this. So I'm just kind of overlapping them. So they're still reasonably straight, but we have a, a bit of a curve here, and we've got these tiny little bumps. And, and that's what a sunflower stem looks like. It actually does have these little bumps in it. So we want to kind of indicate them. So we're just bringing them in here, kind of doing stuff like this. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to take all of this. And we're going to merge that, do a union on that, and we have something like that. Okay, so we have these nice little bumps. It looks pretty good. Okay, the next thing to do, of course, is to give it the color. So let's go to our gradient. And we have a default or whatever the last gradient we used. Now we need three stops, so I'm going to get rid of these, one of those. So they're all going to be this particular green. So you notice I'm using the same kind of green all the way through. That way it just keeps things consistent with everything. So we'll make them all green. 
Now on this green, the two outside greens, this is going to be a minus 65. So I want them a lot darker. And I'm going to do that with this one. And this one here, I don't want it to be such a dark emerald green. I want it to be a bit of a lighter green. So on the brightness, I'll spin it up to about 25. Now I'm going to bring the dark in and I'm going to bring the light right to the edge. So I'm grabbing the light slider right here and just bringing it to the edge. Bring the dark in. I'll bring the dark in a little more here. And so we have something kind of like that. Okay, so I just want the, the light right at the edge. That's perfect. Now, sunflower stem has a lot of lines in it. So we want to indicate those little lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to go grab a nice wave shape. Draw it out. Do the typical wave shape that we usually use. Stretch it down. And rotate it. And we'll just take this. We'll use the format painter. Apply it to this. And I only need two stops. I don't need the light one. So I'm going to pull that off. Take this one back. And make that one transparent. So it goes from dark to transparent. And just bring this one up a bit so it's a little thinner. And we're going to put that in there. And just kind of drag it down. And what we're going to do is we're going to just create a couple more of those. So we have these nice little lines in here. Just like the stem actually does have. And we'll just do something like that. Okay, so we have these nice little lines. It looks pretty obvious here, but it'll be toned down when we do the other steps. Okay, now I'm going to take one of these that we just did. And I'm going to pull it aside. And what I'm going to do is make it a little different color. So I'm going to take this stuff. And I'm going to put an orange on it. Like that. And I'm going to just take this down a bit. And I think what I'll do is I'll flip that. Go to Format, Rotate, Flip Vertically. Just have it going the other way. And we're going to just put a little bit of color. I always like to add another little color in there just to make it look a little more natural. Okay, something like that. That looks pretty good. Now we have to do something here. Not much, but we got to cover this up because it's a little too smooth here. So we're not going to try to make a whole bunch of lines there. But what I will do is take this orange and make it a little bit smaller and kind of just rotate it and just kind of put it in here just so there's a little bit of color. So what we're trying to do is break up that so it's not so perfectly smooth. And that's basically all we kind of need. You'll see how that's going to kind of work out. We've got all our components in there. This part just came a little bit off. I don't want it coming off. So we want to make sure that all these stay on. It's good. So now we're going to select all this. We're going to copy it. And paste. Paste special. Go to the PNG. And the PNG is right here. Okay, the first effect we're going to apply to this is we're going to apply what we did before, the watercolor sponge. So we've got a nice watercolor sponge in there. And what we're going to do is take the brush size all the way over to the right. So it's more like that. So instead of getting tiny little splotches, they're a little bit bigger. And then we're going to take the transparency down. So we'll take the transparency down to maybe about around 60 or 65. Okay, so it gives us a stem that looks a little mottled and it has some lines in it. So it doesn't look so smooth like this one does right here. So it looks a little more natural. Okay, so you can play with the transparency. If you think you need to put higher transparency, you can do higher transparency. If you're happy with that, you can just leave it. So I think around 60, maybe 65% would probably be about the best. Okay, now we do the second effect. So we're going to copy that. And we'll go back to paste. Paste special. PNG. A sunflower stem is actually kind of a fuzzy stem. It's got a lot of tiny little hairs on it. So we kind of want to indicate that too. Let me put that over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to artistic effects. We're going to go here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called a glow diffused. And what that does is make things kind of glow, but it does that kind of a grainy way. So it gives it a bit of a grainy texture. So I'm going to click on that and you can see what we have here. So we have a bit of a grainy, nice little texture. So it doesn't look so smooth. So it kind of looks like it could be tiny little fuzzy little parts of, of the stem right there. So that's kind of what we're looking for. And then we're going to go to format color. We'll add a little more warmer tone. So give it a more, a bit more yellow. And if we put it here, you can see it kind of looks a little more like a natural stem. It doesn't look so much like an illustration, but it looks a little more natural. We have some little lines in here that work pretty good. So the next thing we do is make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to go right to my picture effect here. And instead of using the defaults, I'm going to just manually control it. And I'm going to take the brightness down just a little bit. And about like that. 
not too much, something like that. And I think I can probably flatten this out a bit. And now it looks natural like a nice sunflower stem. Now we're going to add our little shadow. It's going to go down here. So we're going to take this one again. Now we did kind of shrink this, so this one won't match perfectly. So we'll have to try to make it match. So we'll bring that up. And what I'll do is just kind of squish it in a bit. I'm going to get rid of the outline. Okay, now it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're going to give it a nice gradient. So let's go gradient. So we have the dark green that we're going to use for our lines here. So we're going to use those. I can just stretch this back. And you can see what's happening here. So we're adding a little bit of darkness here. And I'm going to play with this just so it's not so perfect. I can bring this in so it's a little bit darker, 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 kind of like that. And that looks pretty good. So now I'll just show you how it all goes together. So we'll take one of these guys. I already did and we'll just line them up like this put it kind of like there and there's your sunflower head so you got a fairly natural looking sunflower head and you got a fairly natural looking sunflower stem okay so there's all our component pieces so we've got our sunflower full sunflower profiles our buds our stems and our leaves and now the next video is to put them all together so in the next video we're going to make our vase our background um, put them all together add some shadows and it will be done so we'll see you on the next video